Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, session on uh, fundamentals of workload modeling at the practical performance analyst. It's the 14th of July 2012 um, and uh, for the last few weeks we've spent uh, time covering the basics of uh, performance engineering, what performance engineering really means. We've looked at uh, the basic concepts of performance requirements analysis or performance requirements gathering, the importance of non-functional requirements um, and defining non-functional requirements at the, at the design stage. Um, we've also basically looked at an introduction to performance modeling um, and the different modeling techniques and introduction to uh, the concepts of performance modeling. So uh, the session today is focused on um, the uh, concepts of workload modeling and how workload modeling is an essential task um, um, across, this, across performance engineering, across the various different processes in performance engineering. We look at the concepts, we look at the definition, we look at the importance, um, and we look at the questions that you would, you would want to ask yourself, you would want to ask the customer, um, you would want to ask business when going about performing workload analysis. So uh, without wasting any more time, let's quickly go and look at the agenda. So the agenda for today is, um, you know, uh, we'll quickly, uh, we've got a few common slides right at the start, um, and um, I'll quickly go over the performance engineering life cycle for those of you who might be uh, jumping to this presentation directly and who might have not had the opportunity to look at um, any of the previous tutorials. Um, we'll define proactive performance management, what it means from a software development lifecycle standpoint, from, a pra from the perspective of a practical performance analyst. Um, we look at a holistic view of performance and how the practical performance analyst looks at performance um, across the application and infrastructure stack. We look at workload modeling, define the concepts of workload modeling, understand why workload modeling is important, um, look at the process for workload modeling from a performance testing capacity management standpoint, look at the questions um, that one would like to ask, uh, look at the questions that you would like to ask as a practical performance analyst during the workload modeling process. Um, examples, uh, quickly uh, 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 gloss over the examples of workload. Um, and then close off by looking at the challenges, deliverables, and resources and tools available. So let's start off by uh, quickly go, uh, going over the concepts of performance engineering. Um, and I'll quickly summarize uh, performance engineering and, and, and across the software development life cycle. So performance engineering is a set of tasks, roles, activities that, are, that need to be performed across the software development life cycle with the objective of ensuring that your application meets is defined non-functional requirements. Performance engineering defines a set of processes at each stage of the development life cycle. So at the functional requirements or the requirements gathering stage, from a performance perspective, you're focused on non-functional requirements. At the architecture and design stage, um, you are focused on performance modeling, on designing for performance. Um, at the build stage, um, um, uh, in the software development life cycle, you're focused on, um, as a practical performance analyst, you're focused on performance optimization, core optimization. When the application goes into system test, system integrator test, UAT, from a performance perspective, you are focused on performance testing the application, identifying bottlenecks in the application, and optimizing the application to meet your non-functional requirements. And at production stage, you are focused on monitoring the application, um, capturing the requisite performance metrics and performing ongoing capacity management. So performance engineering is a set of processes, techniques, skills, roles, activities that need to be performed across the software development life cycle um, so that your application meets its non-functional requirements. Um, in a sense, performance engineering is an ongoing process. Um, you, it, 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 uh, performance is proactive and if you want to meet your non-functional requirements, you have to address performance proactively across the developer life cycle. So that brings us to our next slide. What is proactive performance management? Proactive performance management, um, as this slide summarizes, um, consists of different activities across the life cycle. Um, at design stage, you're performing requirements analysis. Um, being proactive, you're helping the customer understand what his non-functional requirements are. 
you're defining the non-functional requirements so that at later on at, at design stage at build stage and at performance stage you are able to validate the design and the core from a non-functional requirements perspective mm -hmm. at the at the design at the build stage and design sorry at the design stage you're focused on modeling the application performance um, using modeling tools so that you can validate the uh, application designs from a non-functional standpoint at build stage build optimization performance test um, at the testing stage performance monitoring and capacity management at go live so proactive performance is is a is about addressing performance proactively across the development lifecycle. Proactive performance is focused on ensuring that your application performance is, uh, your non-functional requirements are defined early on um, and that you are working proactively with the customer to manage performance across the development lifecycle. Um, proactive performance can be looked at from different perspectives. Proactive performance can be looked at from the perspective of validating design early on. Proactive performance during build can be looked upon as a set of tasks wherein you could work proactively with the uh, development teams in unit testing the application, um, uh, unit testing different components of the application um, in terms of uh, validating application performance at a unit, at a unit level. From a build perspective, from a um, uh, test perspective, uh, proactive performance could be looked at as um, performance testing the application as early as possible in the development lifecycle, not waiting for system integrated test and user accepting test to complete. So you start performance testing those components of the application for which you have code available. And uh, from a monitoring and capacity, from a monitoring and go live perspective, you can performance proactive performance can be looked upon as defining your uh, service level agreements proactively, defining your operational level agreements proactively, working with the customer in capturing the relevant business workload metrics, infrastructure workload metrics, modeling the performance, and predicting the uh, performance, uh, predicting changes in application performance for, for increase in business workload. So that's in a sense proactive performance management across the development lifecycle. So holistic view of performance. Uh, traditionally, performance has always been a bottom-up view. Unfortunately, that um, the bottom-up view won't really take you too far. Um, the bottom-up view is, is important, no doubt. From an infrastructure perspective, the infrastructure teams um, are, are, are concerned about utilization. They are concerned about um, the infrastructure requirements and optimal utilization of infrastructure. From a network perspective, the networking teams are concerned with the network performance, network utilization, impact on the network due to additional business workload. But from an end customer standpoint, what really matters is transaction response times, ability of the uh, um, application to deal, I mean, the application's ability to process um, business workload, to process incoming user requests, and provide an excellent end user experience. And to be able to deliver that, it is very, very important that as a practical performance analyst, you take a top-down view. As a practical performance analyst, you're focused on looking at application performance across the different tiers. You're focused on looking at performance from a transactional response time standpoint, uh, from an end user perspective, understand the end user pains, understand what the end user wants to see, and deliver the end user experience. Um, it's important to understand what the user sees at his browser, at his desktop, on his embedded device. It's also then important to understand the performance at the application tier, how the application is performing from a container standpoint, whether it's a .NET container um, or a J2E container or whatever container it might be. It's important to basically capture the relevant performance metrics at the application tier, understand the business workload, um, um, and, and which might be transactions per second, messages per second, um, 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 and capture those metrics for the purposes of modeling, for the purposes of capacity management. And of course, monitoring your infrastructure performance metrics and your network performance metrics. So a holistic view of performance advocates understanding performance from a top-down standpoint, understanding, uh, capturing the relevant performance metrics across the different application tiers, and using, intelligently using data uh, for the different performance metrics across the different tiers to be able to gauge what the end user sees to be able to model the application performance, to be able to predict impact on application performance for growth in user workload so that you can work with business proactively, provision additional infrastructure as required and tune the application to meet growing business workload. 
So what is workload modeling? Why is workload modeling important? Let's quickly define what we meet, mean by workload um, before we really get into the concepts of workload modeling. So workload in essence is the work that gets done by the application which goes towards consuming system resources. Absolutely no rocket science. Workload can also be defined as the work that needs to be performed by the systems um, for the applications to process the incoming user requests. So basically workload is the work that gets done by the applications um, um, which basically ends up consuming systems resources. And why is it important? Um, from a performance engineering standpoint, as a practical performance analyst, um, whether you're running a performance testing engagement, whether you're running a performance monitoring program, whether you're, you're implementing capacity management processes, um, or whether you're basically just defining functional requirements, it is very, very important that you nail down the workload. Understanding the business workload, understanding what the um, servers actually process is critical for you to define non-functional requirements. Without an understanding of the business workload, without an understanding of what the application is will actually process, without an understanding of what the application is actually meant to do, it is impossible that it is impossible for any practical performance analyst to define relevant non-functional requirements. So workload modeling in essence is essential, is highly critical for you to define or for you to basically un define um, relevant non-functional requirements for your application, which is key for you to execute sensible performance tests, which is key for you to define um, sensible service level agreements, which is key for you to define the operational uh, 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 level agreements, which is key for you to basically define um, capacity management process. So workload modeling is essential um, for, all, for a, a practical performance analyst to define non-functional requirements as a whole. Workload basically can be of two types. As we said, workload is nothing but work that gets done on the system that ends up consuming systems resources. Workload can basically be of two types. You have business workload and infrastructure workload. Business workload basically being work done by the applications in terms of processing incoming user requests. User requests potentially could be number of orders submitted, pages being viewed on the system, transactions per second, messages per second, da 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 da, da so on and so forth. Infrastructure workload basically being system resources being consumed by the application, um, which could basically be viewed as CPU utilization, memory utilization, disk utilization, so on and so forth. So two main workload components, business workload, an infrastructure workload, which together would basically go for which ba which basically together forms work your critical workload um, that you would uh, you would need to understand um, as part of the workload modeling process. Workload in, is is an essential part of performance. Workload is the what part of performance engineering. Workload modeling is required to understand the key players on the system, or uh, the key workload drivers in the system that are responsible for consuming system resources and generating demand. Workload modeling can thus be defined as a process of determining relevant portions of business workload and infrastructure workload that are important to the performance engineering process you're underta undertaking. But, but unfortunately, workload modeling can slightly vary. Um, and, and this is more from an experience, uh, from, from the experience that um, um, uh, we, we've gained over the years. Workload modeling tends to vary a bit from a performance testing standpoint, or let's uh, uh, say from a non-functional requirements perspective, your workload is the high level workload that you need to define at the design stage to be able to nail down the overall non-functional requirements. At the performance testing stage, workload modeling is a lot more sophisticated, is a lot more detailed, a lot more in-depth. Um, you need to apply a, co a, a bit of operational theory, a bit of little slot to model performance, to model your workload which can be used for performance testing. And at capacity management, your workload tends to be um, slightly more simplified at a higher level. So workload modeling techniques will vary based on the activity you, you, you are intending to perform across the performance engineering life cycle. So why is workload modeling important? Um, workload modeling is important for numerous reasons. Obviously, as we stated earlier, without an understanding of workload, it is impossible to define non-functional requirements. I mean, if you were to define a non-functional requirement that basically said the application needs to meet um, 10 seconds 
um, for uh, needs to meet a response time goal of 10 seconds at 30 percent at 50 percent utilization um, on the infrastructure tier and 60 percent utilization on the application tier none of that would be relevant if you hadn't defined a business workload so business workload in essence basically helps you determine the um, uh, the actual work that the system will do it helps you define the those transactional components that the system will actually process um, as part of the non to meet the non-functional requirements so identifying business workload is essential um, um, for you for the practical performance analyst to actually determine what the overall non-functional requirements are identifying business workload is essential for you to define the different aspects of business workload that are responsible for generating demand across the different tiers um, of course as a practical performance analyst you look at workload overall across the different tiers but eventually you need to start nailing down workload across the different tiers as well work defining workload or workload modeling is is also essential because it helps you um, uh, from a performance modeling standpoint when you want to model performance of the application you need to understand what the workload is having an understanding of the workload the components of the workload will help you build relevant performance models um, identifying a business workload is essential to monitor, track, and predict growth of your app of business, um, uh, which without which you would not be able to forecast um, additional infrastructure capacity requirements. So, knowing your business workload, knowing components of business workload, is essential because then you can work proactively with business to understand how the workload is is going to change. Um, and with armed with the information with regards to change in business workload, you can predict, you can model change in application performance. You can you can determine impacts to infrastructure capacity. As we mentioned earlier, modeling workload modeling or knowing your workload um, is essential for performance test. Without a good understanding or sound understanding of your application workload, your business workload, um, you you can't model your performance testing scenarios. Unfortunately. My experience over the years has has uh, has basically um, uh, given me a very poor impression of the capability we have out there in terms of workload modeling, in terms of the ability of performance testing engineers to model application workload for purposes of performance test. We don't tend to ask the right questions. We don't tend to ask. Um, we don't tend to basically dig deep enough. We don't tend to analyze information well enough we basically tend to take information uh, um, at face value we tend to take the facts at face value which is really not good um, because nine times out of ten i've realized that business doesn't really understand the actual metrics the actual business workload and it is only after you start digging into the application it's only after you start digging into the statistics from production do you actually understand what the workload is what the different components of workload is how workload actually trends or how workload has actually been changing and evolving over the years. So it is very, very important that you nail the right workload, that you model your workload appropriately for purposes of performance test so that you can build sensible performance testing scenarios. Now, as part of uh, uh, the tutorials at Practical Performance Analyst, we will be going into the details of workload modeling. But for now, um, let's just basically um, um, leave it at this. Performance testing requires workload modeling using a combination of operational theory and Little's law to help you design sensible performance tests. Perform workload modeling is also highly essential for purposes of capacity management. I mean, if you're doing capacity management, you're doing monitoring of the systems, you can't manage capacity, you can't monitor the application performance if you don't know your relevant workload metrics from a business perspective, if you don't know your relevant workload metrics from an infrastructure standpoint. Hence, it is highly um, um, essential that as a practical performance analyst, as a performance engineer, you focus on determining the relevant workload metrics, both from a capacity management standpoint, from a performance monitoring standpoint, from a performance testing standpoint, and from a requ non-functional requirement standpoint. So in essence, workload modeling is the process of determining relevant business and infrastructure workload um, at different for different pro performance engineering processes. And the performance engineering processes might be um, a non is performance requirements analysis at the design stage. It could be performance modeling at, 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 at the design stage. It could be um, performance testing at build, at test. It could be performance monitoring and capacity management at go live. So workload modeling is very, very important. Workload modeling is essential. Uh, it is essential that you invest time and energy. It is essential that you focus 
on determining the relevant business workload and infrastructure workload metrics so that you deliver an application that scales. So what is the workload modeling process? Um, workload, I mean, let's, let's look at the different steps. Um, while this is an, an overview tutorial, we don't really intend to get into um, the technicalities of it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through the overall, um, through a high level uh, uh, process and help you understand what are the different steps involved. So obviously, with regards to workload modeling, um, you need to understand the overall business objectives, program goals. You need to understand the overall non-functional requirements. What What is it that the business really wants to achieve? Why is it that the program has been constituted in the first place? What is it that the application needs to deliver? What are the success criteria? What are the different success criteria from a business standpoint? What is it that will make the customer happy, basically? Um, um, identify the business and um, infrastructure workload drivers. Focus on... Um, 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 go l ask the right questions. If if the app, if there is an existing application in production, you should go about understanding um, the uh, uh, go about analyzing the application logs. Um, understand what what components of the application actually drive utilization across the different tiers. Understand what part of the customer work, what part of the customer interaction actually creates work on the system. So identify your business workload drivers. Um, and infrastructure workload drivers are mostly obvious because they tend to be um, uh, metrics. They tend to they tend to be metrics like CPU utilization, memory utilization, disk utilization, and so on and so forth. Extract data for workload drivers from your production environment. If you're lucky enough to have a production app, uh, to have a previous application, previous version of the application in production. Um, once you are identified your relevant business workload drivers um, and your infrastructure workload drivers, you would then extract data from your production environment. Um, so let's say, for example, you have a credit card processing application wherein the users submit, um, uh, the users uh, browse through different pages and then end up submitting up um, um, a credit card application. The credit card application then is received by the application tier, which then processes the request, hands it, puts it into a workflow, which then gets picked up by a back office admin staff who then basically reviews the form or reviews the trend, uh, reviews the submitted form and then decides on approving or disapproving it so the business workload in this context would basically be the pages that each the, the page views on the server so page views per second page views per hour would be one of the business workload metrics transactions processed on the system because every time a user submits a transaction there is a whole lot of work that the application server has to do um, so transactions transactions submitted by the customer and customer who is submitting the request for the credit card application um, or transaction uh, transactions being submitted by the um, um, back office staff who who are reviewing the applications and 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 then finally approving it so transactions submitted by the back office admin staff is another business workload driver so basically business workload driver in this sense would, would be page views per second, page views per hour, whichever way you would like to look at it. Uh, transactions submitted by the end customer, transactions submitted by the back office admin staff. So they're business workload drivers in this context. Um, once you have extracted data for your business workload drivers, you want to visualize it, um, you want to analyze it, you want to, you want to slice it, dice it, look at it from different perspectives, understand the trends, understand um, how the workload has moved over a period of time. Now, there are numerous tools to do that. Um, unfortunately, none of them are easy. You could do that in Excel. Um, um, Excel, unfortunately, um, is painful. Um, um, there are a few commercial tools available out there that unfortunately will blow a big hole in your pocket. But it, let's come to that later. So you need to, once you've extracted data from production, you analyze, visualize that data, you understand your workload, you understand the trends, um, um, you understand um, how the workload has moved over a period of time. Um, you then basically use that workload. If you are if 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 you are at the non-functional requirement stage, you use that workload information to define relevant non-functional requirements. Get the non-functional requirements signed off. Use the non-functional requirements as an entry criteria. Um, signed off non-functional requirements as an entry criteria into performance modeling, and you validate the non-functional requirements, you validate the design, application design, using those non-functional requirements, using the workload, business workload that you basically identified. 
um, once you obtain the workload from the production environment or if the application doesn't exist if you obtain the notion of business workload from from the business analyst of a business you also then have to work very closely with business to understand how the workload will grow to understand how the increase of customers accessing the application how the increase in the installed customer base or uh, would eventually impact the um, um, business workload which eventually would then impact application performance so defining workload at the start is not really the end um, defining workload at the start of the application design stage at the application design stage or at the non-functional uh, requirements gathering at the performance requirements gathering stage is just the start you then have to go to business to understand how that not how the workload is expected to grow over a period of time um, from a performance testing perspective you use the workload to basically model uh, you model the workload using Little's law using operational theory which in a sense would would give you um, a, a, a set of scenarios that you can then use for purposes of performance test um, and from a capacity management perspective, you use the workload to basically model application performance and determine capacity impacts. Now, workload modeling is a process that is an ongoing process. You definitely determine your relevant business workload metrics, infrastructure workload metrics at the start of each performance engineering process. And you would, you would have to do it for performance requirements gathering. You would have to define a model workload for for performance modeling, for performance testing, for performance monitoring, for capacity management. But which, whatever process you're, you're determining workload for, whatever process you're modeling workload for, you have to keep your workload updated. Um, and in a sense, um, you have to keep revisiting your workload regularly. Now again, that would depend upon how much or how, how fast does your customer's business change. Um, we've seen customers, uh, certain customer, uh, certain customer environments with massive amount of change at very short time intervals. And in those cases, you want to, you want to, you want to go and revisit your workload drivers probably every couple of months or every quarter. And there are different, there are those customers who do not really have aggressive business, uh, an aggressive business who's um, where the environments are, are relatively static where the applications don't really change very regularly, where you probably have one or two releases every year. Um, and in those cases, wherein there isn't much change, wherein there isn't m many more applications being introduced, there isn't a lot of change in the environment, um, you probably want to revisit your business workload, your business workload and infrastructure workload drivers probably once in six months. So again, this is something that I would leave to you as a practical performance analyst to make a sensible decision. So what are the questions to ask during workload modeling? Obviously, as a practical performance analyst, um, you you need to understand why does the application exist? What is the functionality being delivered by the application? What are the key activities that your application performs to process incoming user requests? Um, it is very, very important that you understand what is the application doing? Why is the application being written? Um, what are the key activities involved um, in um, as, um, in terms of the application processing incoming user requests, um, you need to understand what the application does. Um, you need to understand um, uh, what is the unit of work that best describes the application, uh, best describes the work being performed by the application. Um, do you, the, the other question that you would ask is what are the non-functional requirements for these key activities performed by the applications? Are there any SLAs for these key activities being performed by on by these applications um, and at the end of the day you, you you want to understand how does this the workload or how does the work being done by the application flow downstream how does it impact other applications across the environment so with regards to the questions that need to get asked basically from a practical performance analyst standpoint your focus is understanding why does the application exist? What work does the application do? Um, what is the nature of tasks that the application performs? How does the user submit data to the application? Um, what kind of data does the user submit to the application? Um, what kind of work does the application eventually do? What are the service level agreements for the work that the application does? How does the work being done by the application impact other applications downstream? Um, in a sense, it, uh, workload modeling 
uh, the process of workload modeling is about understanding a business workload. You're uh, understanding the infrastructure workload, documenting relevant components of business workload, infrastructure workload, which you will then eventually use um, later on in your programs. So let's quickly look at the examples uh, from a business workload perspective. Um, the key, uh, some of the examples that come to mind from an online or OLTP standpoint, you're looking at transactions uh, per hour, orders per hour. Again, the the time dimension could be different. Um, in your in your case, it could be 15 minutes. It could be transactions per 30 minutes. But let's let's keep it simple. From an online transaction perspective, an example could be transactions being processed per hour by the system, orders being processed per hour by the system. For a batch, for a system that processes batch workload, um, a business workload could be records processed per job, volume of data processed per job, time taken to complete a job. From a workflow perspective, if there's workflow workflow workload on, on a particular system, it could be number of workflow requests processed per hour, the rate at which the workflow requests were being submitted or, or processed per hour. For messaging workload, similarly, incoming messages processed per queue, outgoing mes messages processed per queue per hour. Um, An infrastructure workload tends to be a lot more simple. Um, CPU utilization, memory utilization, disk IOPS, network IOPS, buffer cache IOPS, etc. So basically, from a workload standpoint, you've broken it down into business workload and infrastructure workload. So let's quickly uh, close off by looking at the challenges involved, um, um, deliverables involved, and, and resources available. From a challenges perspective, lack of access to business SMEs to understand the application functionality, lack of access to SMEs to understand the application architecture. If you haven't understood the application architecture, you don't understand the business, it's impossible for you um, as a practical performance analyst to start digging deeper into the application and identify the relevant sources of data for business workload. Um, lack of understanding of true business workload drivers in the, um, within the app being processed within the application. Um, lack of availability of data, which let's say you, you, you've been able to, um, you, let's say you have access to relevant business SMEs, to application SMEs, um, but if you do not have data for business workload, um, if you don't have data for infrastructure workload, there is very little you can do. And I think some of the biggest challenges that we have today is that applications are not designed to capture relevant performance metrics. Applications are not designed to log relevant performance metrics. Um, and as a result, um, as a practical performance analyst, you end up in a situation wherein you have to define non-functional requirements, you have to model application performance, you have to monitor applications, you have to manage capacity, but the application doesn't log relevant data. And again, this goes back to proactive performance management, wherein at the design stage, you work proactively with the application design teams to log relevant applications of data, relevant aspects of data or relevant pieces of data that will help you down the line to manage application performance proactively, to model performance proactively. And again, challenges from um, um, challenges obtaining buy-in from the application performance, application support teams to extract relevant business workload. Um, and challenges collecting business workload and infrastructure workload data at regular time intervals for purposes of analysis, visualization, and modeling. So basically to summarize it, the challenges involved are ideally around lack of SMEs, um, which tends to be the case at times, um, lack of um, uh, data for business workload from the production environment, lack of um, availability of infrastructure workload due to lack of monitoring tools, or in cases, or in some cases, there are monitoring tools, but the monitoring tools don't aren't configured appropriately, don't collect the right metrics, um, and eventually, basically, um, even if you have monitoring data available, business workload data available, they are not you can't op you they, they can't be provided to you in a form where which can which is usable for purposes of modeling, for purposes of analysis and capacity management. So. Basically, what are the deliverables from a workload modeling perspective? We're looking at um, um, a document that summarizes um, workload. At the non-functional requirements perspective, you're summarizing the key business workload metrics, the key infrastructure workload metrics, um, SLAs for key workload metrics, and growth for key workload metrics, which all of which would basically go towards defining your NFRs, your non-functional requirements. From a performance testing standpoint, it's slightly different because of course you define your business workload metrics, you define your infrastructure workload metrics, you define your SLAs, but eventually you're using your, your, your workload models 
um, with a combination of operational theory and Little's law to, to define your performance testing scenario. So your workload models are slightly different at that stage. Um, and from a capacity management perspective, you define your business workload metrics, you define your infrastructure workload metrics, but you're using that data for purposes of performance modeling to determine impact um, from a capacity standpoint. So your, your, your workload models will slightly vary. The, the, the uh, aspects or, or the dimensions from which you view or you view those performance models um, or the workload models will slightly differ based on the performance engineering process that you intend to use them on. Um, from a resources and tool, tool standpoint, there are different ways at which you can look at this. Um, yeah, Excel is probably your best friend. You can use Excel to extract data, um, to, to, to visualize data. Unfortunately, Excel is not a very nice tool. Um, when you're playing around with large data sets, um, it's very, very painful, very cumbersome. But, um, and hopefully we will change, this will change um, in the next few years as we put together our heads and, and design solutions that are perform practical, that are friendly from a performance engineering standpoint. Um, but right now, the best tool that, that's available to you is Excel to visualize the data, to analyze it. Um, um, there are other tools available as well. You've got GMT or Java Modeling Toolkit, which is got a workload analysis module. Um, but yeah, I mean, the amount of, um, it's it's slightly more sophisticated, not very intuitive, um, good documentation, but you'll struggle using that tool. And you've got R, which is a fantastic tool set. Again, a steep learning curve like GMT, but um, is available for purposes of visualization. Um, R is a statistical modeling tool, which has got fantastic um, plugins for time series forecasting, time series modeling, regression modeling, um, exponential regression modeling, moving um, time series moving averages. Um, it, it's got some fantastic statistical modeling tools available, data cleansing tools available, data mining algorithms available. Uh, but basically, at the end of the day, if you're looking at an easy to use uh, tool set, I would recommend um, starting off with Excel and probably gra um, gravitating towards um, R if you, if, if you find um, Excel's breaking down and not giving you what you want. So thanks a lot for taking the time and listening to us. Um, this is uh, Trevor signing off from the Practical Performance Analyst. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this session on uh, uh, workload modeling and you understood the concept of workload modeling uh, with regards to non-functional requirements, performance testing, performance modeling, um, uh, uh, perfor uh, performance and capacity management. Um, there are There is a lot more interesting content to come over the next months, uh, over the next few weeks and months. Uh, please send us your ideas, send us your thoughts. We would like to hear from you. Um, we would also like you to support us by sharing the content with other uh, performance engineers, recommending us to other performance engineers. Um, and, and, and please do come and let us know um, if, you, uh, if you can help out. We, will, we are more than happy um, um, to, to use um, the resources to basically um, 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 uh, take, take the help that you can provide us. So thanks a lot and uh, until next time, cheers.